<laughs> Here it is. Okay, this is the reason that I wanted to film this. I wanted to show off this sewer cap in particular. So here we go. It's a nifty building. Okay, so um, I find the sewer caps kind of interesting around where I live. So I'm just gonna go for a, a short walk and film some of the more interesting sewer caps you find around Toronto. We're gonna kick things off with this sort of classic jobby. I think this is probably the most common type. You'll notice that most of them have a number on them. This one says 1910. I don't live too far from the main sewage treatment plant. It's just sort of east of here. Um, and I assume that that, because it was opened in 1910, that that was probably put in place around when that opened. I think there's a big tunnel underneath the street that I live on. Because it's so old, I think that it's a combined sewer, so storm water and uh, peeps and poops all go into the same pipes. I'm not sure what these are. I sometimes see them near switches, except there are no switches right here for the streetcars. This is probably the second most common you'll see, Toronto hydroelectric system. In Ontario, people call electricity hydro. Here's a weird one. You only see these in newer neighborhoods normally. Beanfield Metro Connect. It's a fiber company here in Toronto. I didn't actually know that Beanfield was that close to where I live. I think I might give them a call and see if they'll hook up my building. Sometimes the sewage ones will say danger or danger sanitary on them. The water ones are much smaller. They look like this, although I think these might actually just be valves or something. Okay, here's a really cool one. Um, TCHC means Toronto Community Housing something. I think the DE means District Energy though. So again, when it says water, I don't think it means water as in potable water. The District Energy system they're installing here pumps four pipes full of water, a hot water, cold water, a hot return, cold return, and then uses a bunch of centrifugal pumps to sort of um, heat exchange that hot and cold water back to being hotter and colder and then pumps it all around. It's why if you're ever in this area in winter, you will notice there's only one building with sort of smokestacks on top of it. And that's because that one building is actually able to heat something like 200 buildings all around this neighborhood. And it uses like a third less energy than conventionally sort of burning things separately. And I believe that they're also producing electricity and they're using waste heat from that production of electricity, which means that it actually, they're able to peak shave both energy and, um, heat production at once, which is a really, really cool system and it makes it easier on the grid and, and a whole bunch of cool things. Here's a danger sanitary, TWW, that's what the uh, potable water looks like. I'm going to assume that BT Co of CA is Bell Telephone Company of Canada. The Bell plates are among the easiest that you can use to sort of identify how old a neighborhood is. They change the most over the years. Bell has a bunch of different logos, a weird smile face looking one, an actual Bell that one that I haven't actually consciously noticed before, assuming that is Bell. So that's one way that you can kind of get an idea of how long ago a neighborhood got telephone lines installed, or at least installed underground. I'm not sure what this guy does. There's a cute little sort of BB logo here. I don't know if that means something. Traffic, I think is pretty obvious. You'll always find these beside traffic lights. Something interesting about traffic lights is that each one of those lights is like seven feet tall. They're taller than a person. You don't really notice until somebody points it out. This hydro plate is uh, the real McCoy. I made that joke, but I'm now wondering if that actually is what the real McCoy means. It's gotta mean something, right? Maybe McCoy just made reliable metal chunks of something and getting the real one was good. Walking along a newer street and it's a newer Bell logo. This one's still older than me, but not quite their newest one either. So the reason for this unusually large gas hookup is I'm now at that building that is the only building with a boiler in it for this entire neighborhood. A slightly different uh, TCHC DE plate. I'm very confident now that this is the district energy thing. So you can see that's the tower with all the uh, chimneys on top. And then when you look around, you can see that none of the other towers here have chimneys on top of them and that's because they're just relying on hot water. This is the reason that I wanted to film this. I wanted to show off this sewer cap in particular. For extra context, I had only ever noticed it outside of this fire station. It always looked to me like a city with flames shooting out of the top and a big uh, squid creature coming out of the bottom. And this weird font, I thought it said fire along the bottom. And I had no idea what it could be. Like, was it where the, the unholy beasts were kept underneath the streets? 
and then I googled it and it turns out the actual story was a little less exciting. This whole neighborhood uh, basically commissioned all of these plates as a type of art. It's not supposed to be a flaming squid creature engulfing a city, it's supposed to be a tree. There's some other interesting designs though. I still prefer to imagine that uh, it's the caps that sort of keep the uh, Lovecraftian beasts beneath the city and you know sort of city maintenance staff maybe uh, during their orientation are told like oh yeah uh, you know if while you're plowing you have to leave a ridge trying not to do it in front of a handicapped spot and uh, oh yeah if you see one of the flaming squid plates don't open that. Ah uh, yes AT&T Canada the former bell I think. I think these lozenge shapes around the outside indicate that it's AT&T even if it doesn't say although here's one with those lozenges that says TELUS or MFN TELUS? I don't know what MFN would be. Maybe fiber network? Bell system. I think this is an exceptionally old example. Speaking of exceptionally old, here is one from 1889. I also don't recognize the uh, logo that's in the center of this, so that's a very interesting one. Here is another 1889 one. I don't know what GT would be. It's got that lozenge shape of the other sort of telecom ones though. I'm now noticing these grill shapes everywhere. Look, this logo looks like a sewer grill. I don't think that's intentional. These guys are quite worn down. A very cute little one that says Almat. Another similarly sized USI one. A different Bell Teleco one. This one just says BT Co and the little bell, that's cute. MWS or SMW, I'm not sure how to read it. Bell Canada, this time written inside the bell. Traffic, 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 traffic. T-H-E-S, I think that's Toronto Hydroelectric System. I'm assuming that's another teleco that's either out of business or I just haven't heard of. This one got cut in half. I had always heard that the reason that they were circular was so that you couldn't possibly drop it down. If they made them square, if you put it on an angle, it would slide down. But the cut in half circle would still fall down. So that seems like a weird compromise. I think this is yet another 1889 one. <laughs> what a funky 1992 font. If you can't afford the real McCoy, for half the price, you can just have Mick Rogers 1848. 1848? So after seeing a bunch of 1889 ones and now that Rogers 1848 one, I'm really starting to wonder if those numbers on them are dates. I assume they were the year they were installed, especially since most of them seem to be years. They're all roughly 1900s, early 2000s, like years that would have passed recently, but there's no way that that plate was from 1848. It was way too pristine. It was in the middle of the road where a lot of the other ones are worn flat. And I don't even know if Rogers is that old. They certainly wouldn't have had telephone lines under this part of the city that long ago. Ever wondered how these things steer? This is the answer. There's a little lever in the ground. So there are two different ways that streetcars get power. Pantographs, the more modern way, and trolley poles. And we are way behind the rest of the world in replacing our trolley poles. And I think one of the trolley poles just uh, came unseated while one was trying to go through a turn. I think we're gonna get to watch them uh, reset the pole. I guess not. They've uh, pulled up with another truck and there's a, a supervisor out here now. And what's blowing my mind is that they aren't closing the intersection to do this. I would have thought with the blinky trucks, they would have blocked off the intersection. It seems kind of dangerous to just have those guys standing there. I was going to hang around. The guy crawled up on top of the truck with another one of those sort of crisscross, I think they're called frogs, the metal piece that allows the two wires to merge, but it started raining, so I think I'm gonna head home. I'm sure it'd be interesting to watch, but I'm getting cold. The modern Tullus logo, HPFS, this one's Really wacky. It's like a hexagon and then a circle, and they're both cut in half. Videotron. Yet another 1889. So, what didn't I find that I was looking for? A few more of those sort of esoteric phone companies that might not exist anymore, or anything saying telegraph, or maybe the underground mail vacuum tube system that existed. I, I know there are relics of it around, I just wasn't able to find anything. Um, anything related to natural gas. I know the whole city is fired by it and that there must be some infrastructure underground, but I didn't see anything referencing it, which was weird. 
and yeah, maybe spelling errors or something. I don't know. I'll, I'll try again next time. Anyway, thanks for going on a walk with me. Have a beautiful day. If you can't afford the real McCoy, seriously, <laughs>